Look at somebody and say, blessing, hate. Somebody said, what kind of title is this? Well, this is what God wants us all to do. He wants us to bless those that hate us. Amen. I'm preaching about today. I mean, Holy Ghost fear you. You didn't really like crack anyway. You was just trying to escape something. You get that resolve, you won't ever want crack again. That's, that's easy. Liquor, some of y'all used to drink hard liquor and stuff and MD ain't been in your cabinet in 20 years. You just, it didn't taste good, no way. So that was easy, that was easy. You stopped smoking weed, so your lips would try to turn back the right color, all of that. That's easy. Amen, some of this stuff is easier. Oh, but loving and blessing those that hate you and persecute you, purposely try to destroy you, man, this one is hard. It's hard, but it's required. That's why these law, old law keepers, they so jive. Y'all some law keepers and y'all can't even stop hating the white man. You hate somebody and talking about the law. Amen. And Jesus said that you have to love your enemies. Pray for them. Ooh, you know how hard it is to pray for somebody that keep making you mad? Pray for somebody that's messing with you for absolutely no reason at all, only to just so people will pay attention to them? You know how hard that is? It's very hard, but look at somebody say, it's not an option. If you want to see Jesus when he returns, you better do what Jesus said. And Jesus said, bless those that hate you. Romans 12 and 14, Paul said it like this. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and what? Do not curse. Somebody said, oh, I stopped cussing a long time ago. I ain't talking about cussing. Stop doing that too. But that's not what this passage is talking about. This passage is talking about cursing them, wishing harm on them, wanting to see something bad happen to them, wishing they were dead or they would die. Or you may not wish they would die, but if somebody told you that they did, you wouldn't be upset. I hate when people say that. Like, man, I don't want them bad to happen to him, but if he got hit by a bus... No better for him. No, 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 no. The Bible said, do not curse them. Look at somebody say, do not curse them. Somebody jaws getting tight already. Because you know this is gonna be a tough one. Amen. This is gonna be a tough one. Mm. God wants us to bless those that curse us. But how do you bless someone that is purposely trying to? hurt you well you do it by first truly forgiving them but what if they keep doing it you keep how many times 70 times 7 and you're going to get tired of counting you won't make it to 490 I promise you how many times, Lord? How many times I got to forgive them? You got to forgive them until they are forgiven. And this is how you are in the position to bless them in the first place. Genesis 50 and 21. Now, this is the account of Joseph. And it's a very powerful story in this aspect that I'm talking about today because some interesting things happened to Joseph. And Joseph was innocent in his brother's treatment of him he did not deserve what they did to him joseph was just happy his daddy liked him enough to give him a coat amen now jacob was a little you know that might have been a little shady to give him a coat and there's 11 others that don't have a coat all their coats got one color and joseph had a coat of many colors that means you took the time and sewed a whole bunch of different animals together and made him a special coat. And Joseph just, hey, hey, y'all, we all got coats, man. Look at mine. They all looking like, oh, why is yours different? Why yours? You got 
ostrich and peacock in your coat. All we got is old cattle coat. Yeah, they felt some kind of way. Joseph was just like, hey, I just, it's a nice coat. I, I just thought we all got coats and we should be happy we got coats. Amen. Then he had a dream and just went to talking. Man, in my dream, I was way better than y'all. Like, I had a dream that, I, man, all y'all bowed down to me and my sheaves stood there and your sheaves bowed down and everything I had was so much better than what you had. And it was a dream. And they was like, that's it. <laughs> Took him, threw him in a well, sold him into slavery to get rid of him. Away from his father, away from his family, he got sold into slavery. God was still with him and God blessed him. But man, how would you feel about them dudes if you saw them again? This is why Joseph was elevated to the level he was elevated to because when he saw the brothers, this is what he said in Genesis 50 and 21. Now therefore, fear ye not. See, because when they ran up on him, he had the position he had in the dream. They had to go in there to him and bow down. And that's what he was, that's what Joseph was focusing on. What God was going to do, not what the brothers did to him. When you focus on what people did to you, your message and your sermon and all you speak will be what people do to you. You have no room for the true word of God because you constantly telling people what was done to you. The Bible lets us know that Pharaoh and nobody in Egypt really knew what his brothers did to him. Because he wasn't focused on that. Pharaoh would have killed them on sight. They would have ever even made it to his throne. Look at somebody say, keep your mouth shut. Yeah, you got to stop telling it all the time. Amen. You messing your own self up. Genesis 15, 21, he said, now therefore, telling his brothers, fear ye not. He said, I'm going to nourish you and your children. And he comforted them and spake how? Some of y'all are already playing how you going to speak when you run into your enemy. You on your way to hell till you see them. Because you've planned what you're going to say. You've rehearsed it over in the night. In the bed. Ooh, when I run into them. Oh, just wait. When I run, I'm going to let them know. Ooh, I'm going all the way back. All the way back to when things was black and white on TV. I'm going back. I'm getting all. I'm going to reach back and get some stuff. I'm going to let them know how I feel. That's not speaking kindly. Who is quiet in this place? Somebody like, now wait a minute. Where's the shouting? Where's PJ on the organ? Can we do that again? I got a feeling. <laughs> now you ain't escaping this message. If I can't escape it, you can't. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. I had somebody I just, oh gosh, I just despised. And then last night, and I said, Lord, I was praying, and I said, God, I just, I, I want to live every message you preach. I, I, mean, I, I, I mean, every message I preach from you, I want to live it. I want it to be real. I don't want to get up and preach it, and then I'm not doing it. I said, so do I need to do this? Bing! Here come this picture in my head. I said. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lord said, call his name and bless his family. Now listen to this part. He said, he's struggling and in torment because he don't have your blessing. Yes, sir. I said, no. <laughs> Beelzebub! <laughs> Can't be. God said, call his name. The minute I said his name, it felt like I can't tell you, I just broke out into a cry and a yell and a relief 
and a prayer, a powerful prayer. And then under all of that, that love that was always there began to manifest. And I said, God, and he said, you got to do this. You can't just preach it. You have to do it. So we all on this journey today. Yes, y'all getting y'alls too. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> but it was a blessing though. Sometimes you just have no idea the impact people can have on your life when they purposely hurt you. You don't understand what that does to you. Some folk need counseling. You just don't know what that does. But it begins to shift the, your thinking and the way you behave and all of that. And that's the part I don't want. I know how issues do. I don't want issues shifting where I'm, you know, I'll preach this this week. But this passage over here, I need to leave that out. We can't have that in the body of Christ. Got to preach it all. That means you got to do it all to preach it all. Oh, somebody's not with me because somebody's thinking of somebody that you got to let off the hook and they don't deserve it at all. And they deserve everything they're dealing with because of what they did to you. But you got to let them off the hook and then you got to bless them so their life can be better because you blessed them. Joseph said, now therefore, fear ye not. I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them, comforted them, and spoke kindly unto them. When you are able to stop telling others what was done to you, then you have truly forgiven them and can bless them in your thoughts and prayers. Amen. That should be nobody's name that is called, and you go into a, mm -hmm. that one. Yeah, because right after that is, mm, just wait. Every dog has his day. Now you're just saying, oh, <laughs> I don't even know whose parables those are. You just said, oh, TV sitcom lines. That's not in the Bible. Every dog shall have his day. <laughs> yeah, you get like that. But you got to be able to stop telling folks what was done to you and repeating it to other people. Uh-oh. Because the more folks you tell, the more folks you try to get on your side. And what you don't realize is people, if they like you, they're not going to be on your side. If they don't like you, they're going to jump on your side. So you didn't change anything. I just preached in here. You ain't changing nobody's mind. <laughs> Genesis 4 and 11 and Joseph placed his father and his brethren and gave them a possession in the land of Egypt in the what? the best of the land in the land of Ramses as Pharaoh had commanded he took care of them and never brought it up he blessed them now listen if he hadn't blessed them they would have died They had to get the blessing from the one they cursed. And God's going to always do it that way. So be careful who you curse. Amen. Oh, I'm preaching in here. Somebody get it off your heart. Let today be the day that you free your heart. You don't want to be left here when Jesus comes. Because of somebody, you're going to be left here with them. Matter of fact, they may repent and leave here. Blessing an enemy does not mean you speak something that you do not mean. Amen. That don't mean that. Oh, I forgive them. I forgive them. <laughs> no, you don't. You can tell by the tonage of your voice. Oh, I forgive them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> your voice cracking. <laughs> you don't forgive them if you say it like that. So don't say it if you don't mean it. I don't know why all of this torment and turmoil is coming because I know I forgave them. Do you really know? Or do you still think about what they did all the time? Right. 
you know, we're going to be a fellowship. We're going to be a fellowship of love. Amen. Amen. And we're going to love one another through everything. You should, have your, you should have your fellow members back. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Oh, this message is slice. Yeah, I know. This is a ninja message. In the shadows. <laughs> but God knows our hearts, so speaking something you don't mean is a complete waste of time. How do you get before the Lord and try to bless somebody that you really want to curse? You should be blessing them because you want to bless them. You can't bless them and want to curse them. I'm blessing them because the Bible says bless them. So bless them, Lord. Help them, God. <laughs> you can't bless them if you want to curse them. Because all God hears is the curse that's in your heart. Because he's judging the heart of a man, not the words of a man. Can I keep preaching in here? Y'all gonna let me finish this message? Amen. All right, don't be mean mugging. I don't care though. We must bless them and know that they are working something out of us that is interfering with God's plan. Did you hear that? Yeah, when they're doing that, God allowed that to work something out of you. Yeah, persecution will put you on your face. When you otherwise wouldn't be on it. Persecution will make you turn social media off, set the phone down, and get on your crusty knees and start praying. That's what persecution will do. Persecution will have you on a fast when normally you'd be at Fat Burger. Yeah, so God is allowing it. So you bless them and know. That it was allowed for that reason. Ooh, somebody don't like this. Genesis 45 and 5. And we're going to get along in here too. Why would you be walking around with your brothers and sisters and you can't get along with somebody? Why are you in a church like that? You talking as bad about somebody in here as you would if they were a sinner in the world. Genesis 45 and 5. Now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me hither. This is Joseph telling his brothers. Don't be bothered by that and don't be angry with yourselves because you sold me. He said for God did send me before you to preserve life. God sent me here. So you guys thought you were trying to hurt me or whatever but this was God's plan. So don't be angry and don't even worry about it. Let's don't even bring it up. Yeah, somebody persecuted you. You got better, didn't you? You went through a stint, a, 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 a stint of persecution and somebody hurting you. You got better. You got more spiritual. Yeah. Am I telling the truth in here? Yeah, God uses these things and they help us and Joseph recognized that man if y'all hadn't done this I wouldn't be here and my family would have starved and you know that's the hardest one when it's family when family do something to you they don't go away they family Romans 12 and 15, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Amen? So when folks are weeping, you don't go over there with your good news about what you just did. No, you weep with them. And it's okay. When we have a loss, just like Sister Elena, we're going to mourn with her. Because we love her. Amen? That's what you do. But then in the time of rejoicing, we're going to rejoice with one another. This is the ultimate sacrifice. When we learn to truly love others, we will rejoice with their victories and weep with their sorrows. This signifies true love and what? Spiritual, Spiritual unity. Acts 2 and 44. And all that believe were together and had what? 
all things in common. If we're going to be a real church, we got to have all things in common. Amen. Amen. And you can't bring a piece of your Hebrew Israelite roots and try to attach it in here. That's a puzzle piece that's not going to fit. Amen. Because we believe all of that is foolish heresy at ABC. That's what we believe. Amen. And if anybody invites you to their house and start telling you something different, let us know. That means you were sent here by Satan, your father. That's what Jesus called the Pharisees. He said, your father is the devil. And that's all you are if you're a Hebrew Israelite. You're a Pharisee. If you're a black Hebrew Israelite, you're a devil. And the devil sent you here. Because that's your daddy. You mad at your daddy and you've adopted the devil as your daddy. Yeah, I'm talking to you. How would you come in here? Yeah. But we're going we're gonna to have spiritual unity in here. Yeah. One accord. Amen. And that don't make us brainwashed. Anybody brainwashed in here? Somebody told me I was brainwashing y'all. Anybody brain feel washed? Anybody feel brainwashed? Washed with the word. That's a good one. I be trying to figure out brainwashed to do what? We only meet once a week. Ain't nobody that good at brainwashing. When is the brainwashing happening and what are the results? What do I get out of it? What do I get out of the brainwashing? <laughs> people crazy. And then people in here sitting in here believing. Ooh, that's right. I feel it. <laughs> you crazy. You in here. You in here. I upload all the messages online. So when is the brainwashing happening? Yeah. <laughs> Special people. Amen. But this, <laughs> this signifies true love and spiritual unity if we have all things in common. The enemy wants us to feel some kind of way when others are happy and we are not. Most of the time when you're getting hated on and somebody's mad at you, they're mad because you're not bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Remember back in the old building, I gave the analogy of the swing set. Y'all remember that? And people that see you on the swing just happy, smiling, your family, because you know, Facebook kind of show folks that you're a little happy sometimes. Things are going good, all of that, and they're not happy, they're going to come after your happiness and hate on it. And Christians should be happy when others are happy because our job is making people happy. Our goal is to make you as happy as I am by giving you what I have, which is Jesus Christ. And if I give you Jesus, you're going to be just as happy as I am. If I can get you past your issues like I got past some of mine, you're going to be just as happy. That's my job as a believer, to help you be as happy as I am. So why would you be upset? But the enemy wants us to feel this way. He also wants us to be happy when bad things happen to others. That's a devil right there. These feelings usually mean that there is a demonic oppression. There is demonic oppression or control over your life. When you're sitting back wishing and wanting something bad to happen to someone, even if it's, you think it's righteous indignation and it's retribution from the word and all that. No, 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 that's not your job. You're not the judge. God is the judge. He said, avenge not yourselves. You let God handle it. And you let God bless them. You don't try to keep them from being blessed. Because when you try to keep somebody from being blessed, you won't be blessed. Man, I'm preaching in here. And that's okay. But these, these feelings mean that there's a demon somewhere when you're sitting back wishing something bad would happen to somebody. That's a demon. Only the devil wishes harm. You should feel bad when harm happens. Bible said that David was a man after God's own heart. 
the man that chased him all his life and tried to kill him on numerous occasions. When he found out he was dead, the Bible said he was sad. Wasn't glad. Wasn't happy. Can I preach the truth in here? Somebody wanted another kind of message, but amen, we all need this one. Amen, Amen, because I don't want nothing blocking me from seeing Jesus when he comes. He might come in 2023. He's going to be the UFO that can't be shot down. He's going to say, I I came, but I'm not here to stay. Just came to get a few folks. Y'all ready? And you better be ready. Amen. So get this stuff out your heart, man. Don't be sitting around feeling like this. This will send you to hell. You cannot be in Christ and Christ's love not be in you. Proverbs 24 and 17. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth. And let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. Don't get happy that somebody stumbled. Somebody fell. Now you got something. That's not good. You should be wishing the best on people. Amen. You really should be wishing what you want on you. Amen. You can be asking God for stuff and wishing bad on other folks. God bless me with a car. Oh, Lord, you know my bucket has seen better days. Bless me with a car. Bless Lord, help me. And then wishing somebody else's car break down. I hope they car just break down. <laughs> Can't do that. Maybe, man, you know them old preachers used to do that. Boy, if you leave this building while we take an offering, a bus, a train, gonna come out of nowhere without tracks and run you. You can't do that. And I was a little kid. And I'd be sitting back like, can they say that? Over offering? <laughs> Y'all remember that? Somebody did go to river churches like that. Hey, Amen. The preacher be up preaching. If you are, don't you walk while I'm talking. Your leg will turn backwards and your foot will never go forward again. <laughs> you don't know what to do. Huh? Can somebody get me? Just come pick me up, take me to my seat. I don't want to take another step. I need my foot going forward. (laughs) Quit doing this. You ain't got to do all of that. Amen. But anyway, Proverbs 24 17 Rejoice not when thy enemy falleth, and don't let your heart be glad when he stumbles. And this is hard sometimes. When folks have done you wrong and you find out something bad happened to them and you feel a little vindicated, a thought will come in your mind, no better for them. But you got to rebuke that and say, no, 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 that's not good. No, no, I don't want nothing bad to happen to nobody. Amen. No matter how bad they did me and no matter how much they deserve it, I don't, I don't, that's not my job. If we cannot rejoice and suffer with one another now, how will we be able to reign together in the kingdom to come? Where are you going? You're going with the folks like you. You're not going to go and be with the folks that's not like you. So however you are, that's your eternal company. Person that refuses to love, forgive, and see past the faults in others is not fit to rule with Jesus in the afterlife. Oh, weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. I knew it was going to happen because my teeth gnashed. (laughs) Amen. The Lord, you know the word comes for everybody. You can't escape it. Matthew 6 and 15, but if you forgive not men their trespasses, Neither will your father forgive you your trip. Is that pretty simple? The only way to get to heaven is if you forgive if your trespasses are forgiven. The only way to get in heaven is if Jesus forgives your sins. Is there going to be anybody in heaven whose sins aren't forgiven? 
No. There's only one way to get in. You got to be forgiven of your trespasses. But he says here, if you don't forgive men their trespasses. And I said, Lord, that's what's happening. Even with the entire African-American race. We're being fed racial stuff to make us unforgiving and reparation expecting to white people to keep us in, to put us in hell. Preachers of the gospel up preaching racism because they can't forgive. And they ain't, ain't none of the Rolls Royce and Bentley driving preachers talking about racism that have occurred in their own life. They're talking about the past. And they can't forgive. If you can't forgive men their trespasses. White men, black men, red men, whoever men. Your daddy men. Your father men. You can't forgive them. Then God will not forgive you. And if you're not forgiven, you enter into hell for eternity. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to forgive because I'm going to heaven. Can I keep preaching in it? Romans 12 and 16. Live in harmony with one another. Can you live in harmony? Have you ever heard harmony? Don't harmony sound good. Three-part harmony is beautiful. Ooh. Somebody, somebody, let me get three folk. No, I'm just, let me give you a demonstration. <laughs> but beautiful harmony. It sounds good when it's harmony. It's beautiful, right? Three instruments. It's beautiful, right? So he, God wants us to live together like that, like beautiful instruments, beautiful music. Harmony. Live in harmony with one another. Don't be haughty thinking you something. But associate with the lowly. Amen. Well, they don't have enough money to hang out with me because I only hang out with the prominent and the prestigious. That's not what Jesus did. <laughs> No, associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. The devil has caused so much division in Christians today. Lord have mercy. Everybody believes something different. Amen. Many cannot live in harmony because of the contrary spirit that is in them. They have a contrary spirit. Oh, it look like it's going to rain today. No, it's not. Well, the news said it would. No, it, it, it never does when they say it does. Okay, I'm going to go over here with somebody else. Yeah, just contrary. God can do it. Well, he ain't never done it for me. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why. What's wrong? Man, Holy Spirit saying, man, what's wrong with you? Saying it just like that, the Holy Spirit. What's wrong with you? Contrary. Contrary spirit comes from negative experiences. Comes from being let down by someone that keeps promising something. That's where a contrary spirit comes from. Yeah. So a person that's been let down when they were a child, father might have promised them something, mother, whoever was promising them something, never came true. When they get up, they, when they get older, they become cynical and contrary. And they become the worst church members you could ever imagine. Yeah, because they, they don't believe what the pastor's saying. They don't believe what you're saying. They don't believe nothing. They go to church to make a quota in their own heart because they feel like they're supposed to be at church. But the devil is using them to wreck the church because they're contrary. Spirit of God don't move on contrary people because you don't have enough faith to believe if you're contrary. Yeah. I know I'm preaching. They find pleasure in arguments, disagreements, and being cantankerous. Can't you can't stand folk that just always want to argue and disagree? 
That's their reputation. Folk call you over just to argue and disagree. <laughs> Let's go get him so we can have an argument. Because you have a cantankerous spirit. Holy Spirit can't do nothing for you. You're going to argue with him. Is that a whole Lord? What? Cantankerous. Always disagreeing. However, you will always see the same pattern in their families. So a person that is cantankerous like this, they're like that in their families. Family members can't get along with them. They're the family nobody want to fool with because all they do is argue. Bible tells us in Proverbs 22 and 6, train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old, he will not what? He will not what? So you got to train up a child in the way he should go. That means that you train them up understanding respect for people. Don't be arguing. Don't be always. But see, you can't teach that if you and your wife always argue. Yeah. Disagreeing. Cantankerous. In the house. Making them faces and them looks at each other. And them, mm, all them old sound effects. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Should be having knockout, drag out fights in front of your children. Amen. Amen. But some of the family members, that's what they've done. They've ruined their families and their children, and they made it hard for their family to get along with the other families in the family. Then when you sit around and talk about everyone that you really wish you were, then you put something else in your children. Now they're seeking societal approval so that they can be accepted by outsiders because they're not or they don't believe they're accepted by their own family. Man, I know I'm preaching in here. This is too hardcore for somebody, but that's okay. All of this is in the family. When people hate family members or have issues with their own parents and siblings, then they will project these feelings onto members in the faith. So now you at odds with your whole family, you tripping, you cantankerous, all this stuff. Then you come in church and you bring that same spirit in here. Yeah. Then when we try to help you, you get offended. Y'all yes, yes, know them folks that always got an offense? A bad family member is always a what? You can't be a good church member if you're a bad family member. If all your family hates you and you at odds with all of them and you talk all their business and gossip and all that, you're going to come in church and do the exact same thing here. Because we're your spiritual family. Yeah, that's why I don't like folks following me. Oh, brother, you a dog in the face. You just barked and you just, ah, you got the teeth. Oh, you just bold. You just say everything. Well, my family like me, though. <laughs> Amen. I have courage and boldness when it comes to the word, but I ain't trying to cancel folks. <laughs> but they come here thinking that that's what it's about. And then when I tell them, say, brother, I, you need to go have a conversation with your daddy. You need to go forgive your mama. You need to forgive your brothers and sisters. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you shouldn't have loaded that U-Haul up and came here. <laughs> Ephesians 4 and 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be what? Put away from you with all what? Malice. Oh, this message. There are those that cannot fully surrender to God because they would rather carry hate instead of God's love. You know, you can get so used to hate until you think it's okay. First John 4 and 20, if a man say I love God and hated his brother, he's a liar. Amen. You ain't even a Christian. You ain't even saved if you hate your brother. He just 
Jesus said, a man that say, I love God. Now, you, you got to love God to be saved. Yeah. Is there anybody that don't love God saved by God? How you going to be saved by God if you don't love him? Yeah. Wow. Okay, so we can make that point. Yeah. So if you hate your brother, but you say you love God, you're a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? You can't even pass earth tests. How you gonna pass tests in heaven? You can't treat the people in your family right. You can't love them right. How you gonna sing when we all get to heaven? What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see G. Brother, you ain't seeing him and you ain't going. Because you hate your brother. Amen. I almost sucked the whole thing, didn't I? PJ was on his way over. <laughs> yeah. It's your family. Look how y'all sitting. I mean, just a great divide, a great gulf fix. <laughs> Hating folks. Ooh, I just, oh, they think, I just, this, they think they something. They think they, they think, 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 think. You don't know what they think. You ain't in nobody's head. How you know what folks think? You feel like that because you trash. Won't you stop being trash and maybe you'll stop feeling like trash and quit blaming your trash on other folks. You felt like trash before them and you're going to feel like trash after them. Why? Because you are trash. So won't you stop being trash? That's what we all in here doing. Anybody in there trying to stop being trash? That's what we're doing in the church of God. Help us to not be trash. We don't think we better than you. Summary. This body's laying everywhere. Oh my God. <laughs> Somebody, uh, can we do I Got a Feeling 2 next week? <laughs> we need that. <laughs> Just to make sure we, <laughs> we okay. <laughs> Summary, amen. In order to bless an enemy, we must first equate ourselves with them and feel we are just as capable of doing what they did to us. Amen. Did y'all hear that? You're no better than the person you despise. You're no better than your enemy. In order to bless an enemy, we must first equate ourselves with them and feel just as capable of doing what they did to us. When we consider ourselves and the blessing we desire, we are able to truly bless those that are against us. When we curse others, we are cursing ourselves. It's sad that most people that are in a natural and spiritual rut, depressed, anxious, insomniacs, unhealthy, etc., are usually guilty of cursing someone. The same curse that you speak, feel, or desire for someone is the curse that will overtake you. You can't torment a person without being tormented in the same measure. The Bible is helping us when it tells us to never curse anyone. It's keeping us free to be blessed. Man, this is preaching. Do you want to be blessed? Do you want it to be more than just a church saying or a song? Blessed and highly flavored, highly favored when you know you're not? Flavored. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> Can taste the wings now. Let me finish this sermon. Let me speed up. But blessed and highly favored. That's the word. How you doing, brother? Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. No, you're not. You don't really feel that way. Even if you are, you don't feel that way. You're tormented. Because you're talking about folks. Because your mouth is on everybody. Because you're judging everybody. Because you're in everybody's business. You don't have no time to be blessed. Too blessed. 
I'm too blessed to be distressed. That's your bumper sticker. And you got high blood pressure. <laughs> too blessed to be distressed. <laughs> I'm wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in Jesus. First of all, all that's impossible. Second of all, <laughs> you singing songs. Anybody can sing a song. Amen. The most flamboyant sugar loop of all times can sing a song. So many believers sing these songs, wear the t-shirts, and yet have hatred or wish harm on others, not in the world, in the faith. Now this cannot be so. It's impossible. You're not a believer if you're wishing harm on somebody in the faith. You're not in the faith if you're wishing harm on somebody in the faith. Amen. This cannot be so. Your health, your peace, and your prosperity in God depends on you blessing others. You must get to the place where no matter how bad others behave, you wish blessings on them and not curses. The very things you speak and do to them will always come back to you. So always bless those that persecute you and never ever curse them. Amen? First John 2 and 18. Again, a new commandment I write unto you. Which thing is true in him and in you? Because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. How many of you the darkness has passed? Passed. The true light shines, right? Oh, I thought I'd have more hands than that. The true light shines in you now, right? The darkness has passed. Okay. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. You're in darkness. He that loveth his brother abided in the light and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness. That hatred in your heart makes you wake up every day in darkness. He that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whither he goeth. He don't know where he's going because that darkness has what? Blinded his eyes. He don't know where he's going. He don't know he's going to hell. Because his eyes are blinded. By the darkness. You're so angry that you can't even see light. You can't let these folks go. You can't let that person go. You can't forgive. You can't move past it. You can't pray for them, call their name out in prayer. Bless them. You hate them that bad? What they did to you was that bad, huh? And you've never done anything bad. That's the thing. That's the part God don't like. God is like, I'm up here forgiving you for all your crud and you sitting up here holding something against somebody and won't let it go. But if they're in darkness, their eyes are blind and they can't see where they're going. Everyone stand to your feet. Oh, this was a powerful message, I'm telling you. Tough stuff. And you can be so angry or hateful or whatever towards somebody until you don't even know it. You put it somewhere. But God is saying today, wherever you thought you put it, it has to go. You got to forgive. You got to let them go. Yeah, they did you wrong. Yeah, they tried to destroy you. Yeah, they talked about you. Yeah, they tried to fight you. You might have fist fought them. You might have got stabbed, shot, bombed, whatever. It may have gotten that bad. Amen. But you got to let it go. Or you'll be walking in darkness. And you won't be able to see. Now, the thing about seeing, if you can't see, you won't be able to hear either. So you ain't, these messages will start getting on your nerves and you'll just leave this church with that hatred in your heart. 
and end up nowhere. Everyone bow your heads. Well, if that's you, come on. If you want prayer for that, hey, Lord, I just need you to check my heart, you know, because somebody did me pretty bad, and I, I'll be thinking about it all the time. I just, I need this out of me. I just need this out of me. I need to forgive. I need to let it go. Could have been a family member, an acquaintance, a boss from a job, or just whatever the case, wherever, whatever it was. I let it go. Ex-husband, ex-wife. Those are the hardest sometimes because you've shared so much and they know all your secrets. And Man, close best friends, best uh, 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 friend, my girl, my dog, whatever. And they, you done shared stuff with them, told them stuff. They done got mad and went and told everybody all your business, all that old kind of stuff. Man, that stuff can just, man, it can be gut-wrenching. It could really hurt you, really hurt you to the point to where hatred sits in your heart. Then you start, you stop seeing the move of God. You stop having answered prayers. You stop, I mean, it just, it's like a snowball effect. Just start changing, trying to lead you to stop believing totally. But God, God brings messages like this to break up that fallow ground, pull that junk up. Get it out of you so you'll stop popping off at people, smarting off at people, and getting into it with people, and always having an issue. And you, the one in the church that just have an issue with everybody, you just all of that stuff, it just has to go. It has to go. So, we're gonna release it right now, no matter what it is. So, everybody, bow your heads that have come up here, Father God. We thank you, Lord, first for this message. We thank you for a message of conviction, God. We don't want to be a church with just sugar-coated messages and yeah there's recess time there's time for us to feel good there's time for us to dance and and have upbeat music and celebrate and and work all of those things have fun and fellowship and gather and just there's time for that but then there are times God when we need to be convicted we need to be stopped in our tracks father God we need to be stopped and not allowed to go any further until we deal with what it is you want us to deal with. And Father, this is an area that many of us suffer from because of our upbringings, because of things we've been through, because, Father God, that we may have grown up in dysfunction and different things. So a lot of times that just births issues. And these issues lead to failed relationships and failed uh, communications and all these various things. But Father, we ask right now that you will help us forgive. Help us, Lord. Help us to forgive. Help us, Lord, to pray for those that hurt us. Help us, Father God, to pray blessings and wish the best for them as if it was ourselves. Help us, Father God, to be that empathetic spiritually so that we'll feel sorry for them when they do bad and we'll rejoice when they do, do good, even though they may have set out to hurt us. Everyone lift your hands. And Father God, help us forgive Remove everything that is in us. Father God, from being hurt, everything that is in us, when they did us wrong, when they, whatever they did, help us, God, remove it right now in the name of Jesus. And every curse that was spoken, every curse we spoke unintentionally, everything we said that we shouldn't have said, everything we wish that we shouldn't have wished, Father God, we pray and bless them right now, whoever they are. We bless them right now, God, and we take that curse back. We won't curse them. We'll love them. We forgive them. We let that go. We will not allow that to come in between what we have with you, Lord. So empower us right now by the Holy Ghost. That person you're thinking about right now with your hands up, your hands are up in a, as a symbol of surrender. You are letting it go. Your hands are open. They're not closed. You're letting them go out of your life. You're letting it go. What they did to you, what they said, you're letting it go. You're not allowing it to change who God made you. You're not allowing it to change God's plan for you. You're not allowing it to alter your future anymore. You're not allowing it to block God's prosperity for your life. And I ain't talking about financial. I'm talking about just a good relationship with your husband, with your wife. If you're single, a good husband will come. You'll find a good wife. Let it go in the name of Jesus. And we forgive. 
and let it go and we'll pray for them and bless them call them blessed because we are blessed and father god that blessing you've given us that will bless them we give to them in the name of jesus we pray thank you lord thank you lord amen amen hallelujah 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 you ought to feel lighter now come on hug somebody say i'm gonna bless the hate i'm gonna bless the haters i'm gonna bless them i'm gonna speak a blessing i'm not gonna curse anyone bless them lord bless them lord bless them lord bless them financially bless them emotionally bless them mentally bless them spiritually change their life like you changed my life give them what they need like you've given me what i need give them the word like you've given me the word give them truth like you've given me truth father god bless them bless them bless them lord no matter what they've done bless them lord bless them lord let them be happy in you like i'm happy in you let them have joy like i have joy let them have peace like I have peace. Bless them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I let it go. And I bless those. Hallelujah. 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 The sooner you learn that everybody's not going to love you, the better off you'll be. Everybody's not going to love you, but you have to love everybody. Amen. So you find a way. Find a way. Find a way. Don't let anybody stop you from what God has for you. Amen. Come on, put your hands together one more time. Thank you, Lord, for this message. Hallelujah.